from Seattle, Washington, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube on the ground at OpenStack Day Seattle 2015. Now, here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hi, Jeff Frick here with the Cube. We are on the ground in Seattle, Washington at the OpenStack Seattle Innovation Day. It's, it's kind of a supersized meetup, if you will. I think it's the first kind of dedicated event to OpenStack here in Seattle. We are in Vancouver for OpenStack Summit, which is the big annual conference. We'll be at OpenStack Silicon Valley next week, so it's kind of all about OpenStack right now. And, and then there's a lot going on in Seattle with LinuxCon and ContainerCon and everything else. So we're really excited uh, with our next guest, Alan Clark, Director of Industry Initiatives, Emerging Standards, and Open Source for SUSE but you also wear a bunch of other open source hats uh, as the chairman of the OpenStack Foundation, and then you said another one we didn't have on our notes. Yeah, so I'm chairman of the board for the OpenStack Foundation. I'm also on the board of directors for the Linux Foundation. I've been doing that since the beginning of the foundation, actually. So you're just like Mr. Open Source, I think could be your new uh, moniker, or maybe it already is. Yeah, so you know, people go, wow, what do you, and I just say, I'm having fun. I just do it because I have fun. That's great. So. I think really what's unique about your position and, and what I want to dig down is, is perspective, right? Because obviously Linux is kind of the, the granddaddy of them all in terms of enterprise open source, really changed the game. And yeah. on the operating system side, it's been around forever. I think you said it's been around for 20 years or, uh, plus. But you know, open source projects have, have a potential to kind of go off the rails a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a management of the community as well as management of the technology. And now we're seeing this huge wellspring of open projects c constantly. What, what, what are some of the lessons learned from the management of the Linux process? Um, and then more recently now OpenStack, and then as we look at Docker and, yeah. and all these other things that you think are really critical to the success of these projects. So, so the, the thing that's been very interesting, you notice uh, from LinuxCon this week, announcement of a lot of new open source efforts. And I think the, the great thing that's happened is uh, not only are we seeing a lot more participation, particularly uh, corporate participation in open source, right? It's, it used to be a debate of open source versus not, and now we can just see a broad adoption through the corporate industry. But the other beauty is, is these new organizations are learning from the existing organizations. Um, so the whole point of open source is sharing and collaborating and they're learning, right? We're sharing and we're learning from each other about uh, governance models, collaboration models, and so forth. So the thing that I find exciting uh, with these new uh, open source projects that are just starting up is they're learning from us. So we, so using OpenStack, we learned from, from uh, the Linux kernel um, and we developed an organization, and then along came Daylight, Open Daylight and Open NFV and others, and then we have a whole bunch of new ones this week that learned from them and learned from us and said, oh, we like what you do, we can fine tune that a little bit. Right. That's the whole point of collaboration, is right. to keep learning and growing and, and um, uh, fine tuning, right, those models so that it works better. Yeah, it's funny, and no one ever talks about free, right? Open source is not about free, and we've it's been doing this. It's about collaboration. It's about collaboration. It's right? about collab open, cl open, transparent collaboration. Yeah, and, and I think even more from, from where, where I sit, it's really about the speed of innovation, yeah. um, which is just unprecedented in how quickly this can move, and there's just there's no question about a well-organized group, a motivated group, an enthusiastic group will always, it seems, outperform kind of a small independent, yeah. you know, within a company. So yeah. it's really interesting. People right, used to joke, open open source is free like a puppy, right? It was not the yeah. old joke. Beer, <laughs> beer beer. But well, now it's about innovation. It is about innovation. And and you can you can see the openness of this through the, the change of license models over the years, right? It started out GPL because everybody said, oh, you got to incentivize people to contribute back. Well, everybody's gone to these more liberal licenses, right? The, the derivations of the BSDs and so forth because they found you don't have to force people to give back and it's because of the speed of innovation. Things are happening so quickly and developing so quickly. Look at OpenStack. Look at how many projects there are within OpenStack. Started out with two, right? Five years ago, two. Now we're up above 25. 
that is rapid change and rapid innovation. If you try to go off and do that on your own, you want to fork, you're lost. You can't keep up, right? Each release of OpenStack has had 400 and some odd features, right, every six months. Try to do that on your own. Try to fork and do your own little community. doesn't happen. So that's the incentive, right? And so it just snowballs. It keeps right. growing bigger and bigger and bigger. But what about the management of that and, and, and the risk of it going a different direction? Or sometimes we hear, you know, people have concerns with if, if it's an IBM or an HP or EMC, yeah. whomever, pick your, pick your big whale, you know, gets involved. Are they suddenly derailing kind of the pureness of the, of the openness? Uh, Randy, last year at OpenStack Summit, Randy Bias was talking about, you know, some issues he had with kind of governance and direction um, and that could be better done. Talk about those kind of challenges when you've got all these people and hundreds of projects <laughs> all <laughs> running, uh, you know, running as qu quickly as they can. Well, that's, that goes back to the governance models, right? And I, with OpenStack, I think we picked a good one. And I think it actually shows when you can have the critics speak out, right, and, and, and say what their qualms are, um, and we try to address those. But one thing to look at, is when you join an open source project, make sure that it's, it's not controlled by any one single entity. And in fact, in our technical committee, one of their criteria when they look at spinning up a new effort is they want to make sure that the collaboration is, is broadly, right, not just a single company. And um, if you do that, then it, it balances itself out over time. Right. So you, you won't see any single entity controlling it. So I want to shift gears a little bit. Sure. Uh, we talk a lot on theCUBE about people, process, and tech. Um, and we, we talk a lot, of tech's kind of the thing that brings us all together, but we all know process is difficult, and people are, is probably the hardest part of any kind of innovation. F from your perspective, having been around the block a few times, in terms of people managing open source within their own employee base, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's obviously a, great, uh, a source of great pride when people contribute, and you see it at these shows where there's rock right. stars and everyone's excited to meet the guy that wrote whatever. <laughs> but if you're managing that person in their next unit of work, how do you, how do you continue to feed that, uh, the, the, the goodness of them working on an open source project versus I got, I got work done that we need to do for the company exactly. as well? How, how does that manage? What are some of the best practices you've seen out there? So, so that's a very good topic because um, we call those the hidden influencers. Uh, because in the community, the, those po the, the managers that uh, manage those engineers are typically hidden. And so we started up an effort uh, that's turned into our, our product work group um, to pull those people and get them involved, right? So we're not, trying, we're not there trying to coerce the engineers to go work on something that's not of interest to their company. We want to make sure that those interests are aligned. And so by pulling those people in and having those discussions to help build out uh, the feature list and futures, we're they've got have a dis they now have a say and and discussion in in where we're heading in part of that roadmap. So the best practice that I would say here is get them involved, get them part of the discussion, right? Yeah. And that keeps them interested in what the engineers are working on, so everybody's happy. Right. And then and then I just I'm looking at your title again, you know, emerging standards. So from the other side of the table mm -hmm. is is the enterprise CIO that's got to decide which of the stuff he wants to buy and implement. And right. the the speed of innovation, the speed of new technologies coming out, it just continues to accelerate. What's your advice to, to the guy that's <laughs> just trying to just trying to get his job done and trying to keep up and 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 and, and you know deliver value for his constituents and his company? Yeah. Yet he's just hit with this plethora of of you know Spark and <laughs> uh, Hadoop and 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 everything else. What what do you tell that guy? How how do you stay on top of it? What's the right kind of level of of engagement to stay informed, be able to move when you have to, but not just to be overwhelmed? Yeah. So so this again another best practice that I think uh, is that uh, OpenStack has done very well is they focused on the super user. So they're trying not to talk to them in terms of features and text and you know get down to the bits and bytes but to get up to the message, what's the value, right? What is the value that, that this software brings to your company? And speak to them in terms of business. Turn those into best practice so they understand what's it gonna take for me to actually consume this technology and to implement it. That's the key, that's where they spend their time. So again, it goes back to the community because we're inviting them into the community focused with the, the content and, and uh, message that they need to hear in their language. Um, and so 
they should be able to quickly s spin up on that. Now, there's also a benefit to the vendor that we've we've learned uh, from our from our surveys, and that is that the value of having those users in our community is they're now talking straight to the engineers, they're getting a straight scoop, um, and they're also talking to the vendors. So you get get a better relationship. It's no longer just a black box that you're trying to sell to the to the mm. user, but he understands what's under the cover. He doesn't want to compile the code but he understands how it works, so he can implement within his organization and get better value out of it. Right, that's interesting. So then the, his own people can work within this thing too now. It's yeah. not It's not this, tr I hope it works, I'm, I'm trusting you, I'm jumping in, I'm jumping in with this because now he's got access to the, to under the cover. Exactly, so and you know, as we've all heard the numbers of the number of people within OpenStack, right? They were close to 28, 29,000. Not all of those guys are working code. If you look at it, there's only about 2,000 that are working code. So it's a, it's a community not just of coders, but marketers and users and vendors. It's just you're bringing the whole ecosystem together, and they're talking in the open and in transparent right, model. Right. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna, Alan Clark, thanks for joining us. You're I think welcome. we just call you Mr. Open Source, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jeff Frick. We are in downtown Seattle at the OpenStack Seattle Innovation Day. You're watching theCUBE, thanks for watching.